Good morning, Church of Renton, beloved brothers and sisters. We are here uh, this morning to uh, praise the name of the Lord in the beauty of His holiness. It is time for us to get together again, we on this side of the screen, and you on the other side, so we can worship the Lord together. Let's uh, uh, call upon the name of the Lord and have a word of prayer so we can start this service. Welcome. Uh, invite your friends, tell them to join the, the uh, Salvation Army Rent Encore Facebook page now so we can uh, have them joining us for service also. Let us have a word of prayer. Let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for this wonderful time. This is a privilege to be together, Lord, today. We praise your name in the beauty of your holiness, Lord. We ask that your Holy Spirit guide us today as we will worship you, Lord. We pray that your Holy Spirit will talk to us, will soften our hearts and open our minds today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. This morning I would like you to open your Bible in the book of Psalm. Psalms number 121. Psalms one. Two, one, and we are going to be reading Psalms 1 to 1. It's a psalm that's very proper for our days um, as we are having uh, so many, so much difficulties uh, going on around the globe and in, your, in our country too. Let us pray. Let us, let us uh, read the Bible. I mean, you got it? Psalm 1 to 1 says, I lift my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot sleep. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Amen. May the Lord bless the reading of His Word. Let's praise the name of the Lord together. Let's have a worship time. Good morning, everybody. I hope you guys are doing good. Um, our family misses you. Hopefully uh, we can see each other soon. Um, please be blessed by uh, singing with us this morning. So we're going to sing to start out um, an old hymn of the church, To God Be the Glory. The song uh, was written 140 years ago. And uh, the, the words are great. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. Right? That's why we love God. He's been our blessing. He's been our redeemer. He watches over us day and night. So here we go. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son. Who yielded his life and atonement for sin. And opened the life gate that all may
has taught us great things he has done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son. song. We bring the sacrifice of praise unto the house of the Lord, and we offer up to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving, and we offer up to you the sacrifice of praise. Indeed. We bring the sacrifice of praise unto the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of Sacrifice of praise unto the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise unto the house of the Lord. And we offer up to you the sacrifices of thanksgiving. And we offer up to you the sacrifices. Sacrifices of thanksgiving, and we offer up to you the sacrifices of joy. Amen. Um, I often say this when I'm singing worship, but uh, our worship should change us. Uh, whenever we come to, before God, we shouldn't leave the same. If you're leaving the same as when you started, you probably did something wrong. It's probably not heartfelt. Because whenever you're in front of the risen Savior, whenever you're in front of a holy and blameless God, there's got to be some sort of change in you, some conviction, something that you need to work on. Because God doesn't, doesn't start us out as where we're going to end up. We've got to start out somewhere, and then it's the journey. So when you praise... Give up that sacrifice. Make sure that you're giving to God. This next song says, You're my strength when I'm weak. You're the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. I'm going to seek you as a precious jewel. Lord, to give up, I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. Here we go. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel. Lord, to give up, I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. Jesus.
my sin, my cross, my shame. Taking my sin, my cross, my shame. Rising again, I bless your name. You are my all in all. When I fall down, you pick me up. When I am dry, you fill my cup. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. We sing that chorus one more time. You guys take it. of that song just lies in the chorus. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. He's our sacrifice and he's our, he's our redeemer. So uh, praise God with us this morning. Thank you for being part of our worship. Um, we miss you guys. Thank you for a wonderful time of worship. It's so nice to uh, bring the name of the Lord up. Um, I'd like to uh, give you some announcements, just one announcement. It's we should be coming back to in chapel services soon. We're just waiting for our governor to release for our county, right? the phase two status we are in phase one phase two status will be able to host up to 50 people 50 five zero in our building there will be some requirements though that we are working on uh, for that to uh, come to our services and just i would like to ask you to be on the lookout for those uh, for that information we will be coming soon here in our online services, we will announce what will be needed. Well, we know that um, we will have to wear masks, for example. We will have to be in masks. Um, uh, there will be no kids programs. The kids can come, but they will sit here in the audience with us. There will be uh, sign, signing sheets in the entrance, alcohol gel, all those preventions that we normally have, but it, it should be coming soon. We need to uh, keep an eye on it. We will keep you informed. So I pray that uh, uh, you'll be tuned in so you know when we come back and we'll love to uh, see you around here. Uh, so let's come now uh, to a time for our uh, offerings, tithes and offerings. All right, good morning, church family. Um, again, here we are. It's another way for us to worship the Lord with our tithes and offerings, gifts and donations and everything, okay? Um, like I usually say every Sunday, there's going to be um, the link here for the tithe.ly. Uh, if you're on uh, Facebook, it'll be where you go ahead and, and write down and all the comments. And, uh, and same thing for uh, YouTube. If you're on YouTube, then it's going to be on the uh, comment section, um, uh, the description section, uh, excuse me, down below. Okay? And uh, if you'd like the old fashioned way to just go ahead and mail in your uh, check, then you may do so. 
at, um, for the Salvation Army, right? P.O. Box 977, Renton, Washington, 98057, okay? And uh, you can be sure that every single penny go, uh, goes t uh, towards saving lives and, and tra changing the people, transforming them uh, for the best. Amen? So uh, with that said, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much uh, for this opportunity that you've given us to worship you, to praise your name, and to even tithe uh, and bring uh, 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 all the, the, uh, the everything that we've uh, collected and to put back uh, into your kingdom, into your service, uh, and pour into uh, people's lives. Uh, God, help us to be good stewards um, of it. Help us, God, to continue um, doing our best and, and using um, the gifts that you've uh, given us uh, to really transform lives. This is what I pray for in your son Jesus' name. Amen. For our corporate prayer today, we have some uh, reasons for prayer. We need to pray for our nation. We need to pray for our nation, uh, for social justice, for God's grace, uh, for a time of understanding all over our country and in the world. Uh, we also need to pray for the, the uh, vulnerable, the elderly, the, the children. We want to pray also for our church family. Uh, we want to uh, Remembering now that Ted is doing his surgery in two days. And next Tuesday, on the 9th, um, Ted will go to his surgery. We will keep on praying for him. Uh, we need to also pray for our Salvation Army family uh, regionally and around the world. Our staff, volunteers, all the clients that come for services in the Salvation Army here in Renton. Let's, let's uh, cry for God's help now. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we, we thank you, Heavenly Father, in your presence. We want to ask you, Lord, that you heal our nation. Lord, we, we are in your presence and we come to you today in the name of Jesus. Lord, may your love, may your grace be poured in the heart of all of those who are hurting now. Lord, we are claiming for social justice, Lord. We pray for our church family. Lord, protect us. Lord, guide us. Our youth, Lord, our children, the elderly, our, our brothers and sisters, Lord. Lord, we also pray for Ted. We pray that you keep him during his surgery. We pray for a successful intervention, Lord. You be the surgeon, we pray. Lord, bless our army and the leadership, our staff volunteers, clients, Lord, we pray for your guidance and your mercy upon us. And we do that, Lord, in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Uh, now we're going to have a time for our service, our, I mean, our sermon, I rather say. Uh, we would like to ask you to open your Bibles to the uh, Gospel of John. Gospel of John, chapter 10, we'll be reading for verses 1 to 11. John 10, 1 to 11. So here is what the Word of God says. Very truly I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in, in by any other way, is a thief and robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd, the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought all of his own, he goes ahead, ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact. They will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. 
All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. That's it. The Lord, as we come to you this morning, we pray your blessings. We pray, Lord, that your message today will soften our hearts again, Lord, and will open our minds so we will obey you, Lord. We pray in your name. Amen. Well, in this specific text, text here, the, in the scriptures that we read, uh, Jesus uh, was responding to the Pharisees about keeping the Sabbath. Uh, Jesus uh, had previously, a uh, couple of days before, healed a blind man, and the Pharisees were uh, after him and interrogating him. Uh, but then uh, they want to know why he was healed on Saturday, and and they said, I don't know, the only thing I know is that I got healed and I'm, I'm here and I'm praising God. Well, then when Jesus was talking to the Pharisees, he leads the conversation and, and he talks about a spiritual blindness. That's when they could not understand. The Pharisees were not understanding that Jesus was the one that was sent by God to redeem Israel and the whole world. That's when Jesus speaks to them the next. Uh, we just hear in, in John Gospel, we see that uh, uh, Jesus presents himself in different pictures. John included a seven I am statements where Jesus publicly identified himself with the great I am. Yahweh, the covenant God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The one who appeared to Moses in the burning bush and sent him to deliver Israel from Egyptian bondage. So Jesus said things like, I'm the bread of life. He also said, I'm the light of the world. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the true vine. Well, in today's scripture that we just read, Jesus added two more images for him. He said, I am the gate and I am the good shepherd. So that's where we will focus our thoughts and meditation this morning. Here Jesus drew on an image very familiar to his listeners, a shepherd and his sheep. Well, I love the story of this uh, sheep uh, and that uh, was in, in the pasture and the shepherd uh, was there with them, but he lost his, his Bible. The shepherd lost his Bible and he tries to find it, he cannot find it. Three weeks later, a ship comes uh, to him carrying his Bible in his mouth. The shepherd couldn't believe his eyes. He takes a look at the ship and says, Whoa, it is a miracle. And the ship replies, mm, not really, your name was inside of the cover. <laughs> well, in Jesus' time, the ship were essential not only for wool. Ship was essential for food. It was essential also for temple worship. And the image of a shepherd was deep rooted into the culture of Israel. Several Bible verses use the image of God as the shepherd and Israel as the sheep. Uh, so it should come as no surprise that Jesus drew on the image of the shepherd as well. It was a simple way to explain his role as his people could better identify with what he was saying. Like for me, a Brazilian guy, if you come and say things like, the whole nine yards, I'll look at you and have a scenery face, a long face, <laughs> right? But if you tell me, 
The player tackled the opponent inside of the big box and the referee called it a penalty kick. Boy, you're talking business. It's soccer. Okay? Well, but back then, the Middle East uh, sheep herders didn't use sheep dogs to drive the sheep. Rather, the shepherds themselves, they led the sheep themselves. How they, they did that? Well, when they still do, uh, by using their voices. So they taught the sheep to follow them by recognizing the uniqueness sound of their voices. As Jesus identified himself with two images, the shepherd and the gate, uh, let's unveil what that means for us today. Let's first see Jesus as the shepherd. The shepherd. That tells me that we can trust his voice and follow him. Now we have to understand also that a, a sheep uh, is a very nervous creature that can get easily in trouble. It frightens easily. A sheep might get stuck in a briar patch. Uh, a sheep may fall into a creek while trying to drink water. A sheep is notorious for following the herd. So if one sheep walks off a cliff, it's quite possible that the whole herd will follow. So the sheep's salvation is the shepherd. The shepherd is there to protect them from predators. The shepherd is there to guide them to green fields for grazing. The shepherd is there to pull out the briars from the sheep's wool, to lead them to the waters to quench their thirst. The sheep learns very early on in their lives that they, uh, the shepherds are there to protect them. And so the shepherd can be trusted. The Apostle Paul reminds us in Romans chapter 8, verse 31, he said, If God is for us, who can be against us? Paul's assumption is that God is indeed for us. Just a few verses later, he writes in John 8, verses 38 and 39, For I am convinced that nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We can trust Jesus because He is our shepherd. He guides us. Jesus protects us. He provides us and He watches over us. Like the shepherd here, He calls us by name. By being His sheep, we need to learn His voice. There are a lot of voices in the world calling for our attention nowadays. There is the voice of style, maybe the voice of popularity. The voice of prosperity is also around. The voice of success, all oh, tell me, right? We all want to get the successful people. Some voices are healthier than others, but some are very bad for us. But the one voice that we need to hear the most is the voice of Jesus Christ. How do we hear His voice? Well, we read the Bible. We think about the Bible. We meditate in the Bible. We pray on the Bible. We talk about the Bible. We let the Bible, we let the scriptures soak into our lives. Jesus is the living word and scripture is God's written word. As we get to know Jesus better, we get to know God better. Later in today's chapter, Jesus told to the Pharisees in John 10, verse 38, The Father is in me, and I in the Father. As we get to know Jesus better, we understand that He is not driving us forward with sheep dogs or sticks, but He Himself is leading us with His voice. Jesus tells us to put God first, and we need to hear that. The Gospels record Him rising early in the morning.
morning to pray to his father going to the temple as usual. Jesus tells us to love our neighbor. His scriptures record him loving and forgiving and healing all those around him. Jesus tells us you will be persecuted. His scriptures record record his persecution all the way to the cross. So Jesus leads us by example. The other thing that Jesus helps us to learn his voice is through obedience. When the Holy Spirit speaks to us through the reading of scriptures or on our prayer time, and if prompts us to do something, we need to do it immediately. We need to obey. The more we obey Jesus, the more we learn to recognize His voice. The opposite is also true. The more we disobey, the less likely we can hear His voice. And why is that? Because we end up hardening our hearts to God. Like the Pharaoh of Egypt, we sometimes harden our hearts. Next comes the plagues and they grow more and more severe. Why? Because God wants our attention. Jesus wants our obedience for our own good, for our own protection, and also for God's glory. James 1.22 scripture says, Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. We need to follow the Nike motto. You know the Nike motto? Just do it. Isn't it that? Yeah. If the Holy Spirit prompts us to encourage our neighbor, we need to do it right away. Like a sheep following its shepherd, we need to follow our good shepherd, Jesus Christ. You know, sometimes in the Middle East, various flocks of sheep become intermingled. They get together. Uh, from both herds, several herds, and for the night, several shepherds bring their flocks into a common holding pen. They spend the night all together in there, but the next morning, it is time to go separate ways. It is time to take different flocks to different grazing areas, and to do that, the shepherds come out the pen, and each of them is picked to their herds, and one by one, the sheep fall in with their respective shepherd. It is an amazing sight. They taught them to hear, to hear their voices, and they come out in separate locations, and they start calling them, and all of them, they get separated because they know their shepherd's voice. Jesus is our good shepherd. Do you know his voice? Do you know when he calls you or you have no idea what his voice looks like and you end up going with the wrong crowd? It's very important to know uh, Jesus' voice. So Jesus has this comparison of himself being the shepherd and we being the sheep. But Jesus uh, taught us a second, uh, he, 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 he compared himself also to a gate, a gate of uh, uh, the entrance, and that tells me that we can rest in his security. Now, maybe you're thinking, how did the shepherd Jesus suddenly became and becomes the gate? How can that be? Most of these sheep pens consisted of a stone wall or a simple cave with an open entrance. Uh, fancy hanging gates on those days were rare. And as the sheep came in at night, the shepherd would tenderly do uh, some things. They, before they put their uh, sheep inside of the pen, they uh, would check each one for injuries. They would uh, rub oils on possible wounds. They gave waters to those who were thirsty. Then once all the sheep were settled in for the night, the shepherd would seal the entrance. Well, sometimes he would fill the gap in the wall or the opening in the cave with foliage. But often he would use himself. 
he would simply lie down at the entrance to keep the sheep and the predators out. The shepherd became the gate. What a beautiful picture. The gate or door becomes our entry point into ultimate security. The gate spiritually represents what the Bible tells eternal life. And notice that Jesus alone is our gate. He, he said, I am the way and the truth and the life. John 14, 6, he says, no one comes to the Father except through me. So Jesus is our entry point, not only to heaven, but to an abundant life now. Jesus is our entry point to a relationship with the God who made us and with the God who loves us. Yes, Christianity is an exclusive, exclusive religion because Jesus himself said, I am the gate. And we come to the Heavenly Father through him. But Christianity is also inclusive because Jesus welcomes all who will come. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 9 scripture says, God will, God's will is that no one would perish but all receive eternal life. The gate also represents safety, security. Once we were in the sheep pen, our good shepherd will protect us from the evil one. We can trust him. And there is a saying that says, that says uh, in God we trust, all others pay cash. Right? But do we really trust God? Or do we trust in our retirement pension? Or maybe we trust in our ability? Where do we find ultimate security? Where do we protect us uh, from the evil? Right? The evil came to steal, to kill, to destroy. And there is only one way. It's trusting in the one who has come to bring us life and life to the full. We trust in the one who has laid down his life for us. The ultimate proof that Jesus demonstrated for us, his goodness and his love. There is a story here uh, in the Seattle area. In one Memorial Day weekend, a Christian dentist from Seattle took his 12-year-old daughter and 11-year-old son on a climb up on Mount Rainier. But a storm came up suddenly, battering them with hurricane force winds and blinding white out blizzard, making it impossible to see or to move on. Uh, James Reddick dug an oblong trench in the snow, then tucked his children into his sleeping bags away from the entrance. He covered the opening with a tarp, but it kept blowing away. Reddick found that the only way to keep in the place uh, was to weight it down on his own body across the opening. Two days passed before rescuers finally noticed the corner of a backpack, back, backpack protruding from deep snow. They rushed to the site, hoping the snow-covered mound would contain the three missing climbers. Inside, they found Sharon and David Reddick. They were very much alive. The two kids were alive. But the stiff body of their father lay against one wall of the snow cave. He had taken the cold spot, in the words of one rescuer, by using his own back as the outer wall. So he himself closed the door from the, the wind's entrance so he could block it and keep it inside the water. So this illustrates how Jesus is staying at the door to protect us. Jesus' listeners must have envisioned something like that as Jesus described a good shepherd who would lay down his life for his sheep. Nothing would come between the good shepherd and his sheep. He would die if he had to for their protection. Well, 
the Apostle John would later describe in the book of Revelation a scene in heaven where he, he said in Revelation 7, 17, it says, For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. In days of uncertainty and fear that many people are living today, we need to rest assured that our Lord Jesus is our shepherd. He is here to protect us. Let us do our part. Take care of ourselves the most that we can, and the Good Shepherd will take care of the rest. Maybe the Holy Spirit this morning has touched your heart. And if you do not know Jesus as your Savior and Lord, surrender to Him. Repent of your sins. And you can do that and, and, and pray with me now. He wants to be your shepherd and have you as His sheep, part of His flock. Pray with me if you want to make Jesus your Savior and Lord. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for my sins. I repent of my sins and receive you as my Savior and Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, if you have done this prayer, the Word of God says that you are part of God's family. Right? You surrender, you repent of your sins. So please send us a message. We will, would like to, to pray for you and get in touch with you and contact you. Now, if you know Jesus and you are going through tough times, we can also pray for Jesus to come and to help us uh, in these difficult days we're living in. Let's, let us pray. Thank you, Jesus, that you are both our good shepherd and you are our gate also the door to our salvation. Lord, help us to trust in you for ultimate security. Lord, help us to love you more and more as we realize how much you love us. Even to lay down, Lord, your life for us. Thanks for keeping us safe as your flock. Help us to learn your voice and to follow you all the days of our lives. And we pray that Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. May the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen. Amen. May God bless you richly. Uh, we will see you again uh, on Wednesday at 7 p.m. for our midweek devotional. I pray that you join us. If you see some uh, friends that are missing our live transmission, our transmission for the services this Sunday, just tell them we will soon uh, be coming to in-church services. We're just waiting on, on, on the information from our governor. We're getting ready. In fact, we have here at the chapel all chairs ready set apart, so it's, it's a nice view. We'll be opening the back so we can accommodate uh, the 50 that we are allowed to, uh, but we will give you a uh, notice uh, ahead of time. So just keep tuned and let's continue to serve our Lord Jesus Christ. May God bless you. Have a wonderful week. A wonderful week. God bless you. Amen.